So we'd like to welcome all of you who are joining us on YouTube today as we uh, come together in worship in a rather unique and different way this week. And so I'd like to welcome you all to worship on this, which is Sunday, March 22nd. And our Lenten theme for today is Encounters at the Edge of Darkness. As we light this symbol of God among us, we see that fire and light come together in the flames that dance atop this candle refining fire. Fire that burns, light that pierces, light that soothes. Thanks for the fire and light. Thanks for your presence with us during these days of Lent. We have entered the Lenten time of preparation. It is a time when we refocus our faith on God. But where do we find God? God calls us from the tattered edges, from the margins, calling us to come and see. To truly find God, we must be willing to leave the comfort found in the middle places and journey toward those tattered edges. We light this fourth candle of Lent to help us remember that in the journey towards our encounters with God at the tattered edge, we come face to face with places of darkness in our world and in ourselves. Help us to learn that we can come to know you in dark places, as well as places of light. This candle reminds us that God calls us from the tattered edges of life calling us through dark places where we are afraid to go. Thank you. 
challenging times, times when it's sometimes difficult to feel God's presence in our lives, when we are so consumed by what is happening in the world these last few weeks that we forget that even in the midst of all of this upheaval, all of this uncertainty, God still calls us to be God's people, offering God's presence, God's love, God's mercy. God's compassion to each and every one of us. And though I know that many of us are feeling very much alone and isolated, I invite you to pass on these gifts that we have been given by God in phone calls, in messages, in letters, to those around you and to those that you care about, so that all people can still feel the presence of God in their lives this time. We are gifted with many gifts from God. It is our task to share those gifts with the world, even when it is difficult. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us sing once again, praise the one who breaks the darkness.
first reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 8. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. Our Gospel reading is from John. It's a rather long reading, so I invite you to bear with us. John chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors of, and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And then the Pharisees also began to ask him, how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. And so they said again to the black blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say has been born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. For the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that, though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciples? But we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. 
You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered, You were born entirely in sins, and, they, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and this one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have you ever had one of those times in your life when things just seem to happen and it's almost as if they were planned? Just over six weeks ago, when we were planning for Lent, who would have known that the themes for this year's Lenten services would be so fitting to what is happening in the world? We began speaking about this idea of account encounters at the edge. And we spoke about how, as humanity, we are faced with temptation and how God is with us in those times. And so we spoke about encounters at the edge of temptation. And then we spoke about this idea of encounters at the edge of others, those people who are different from us that we might see as others in the world, and how God might just be present in them and with them. And last week we spoke about this idea of encounters at the edge of our need. And we talked about what we really need in our lives versus what we might want, and how it is easy for us to confuse the two. Today we talk about how we might be able to meet God in our encounters at the edge of darkness. Encounters at the edge of darkness, it might seem rather fitting at this time that we're living in because for many this time seems so strange and foreign. It's interesting that in pop culture many, many bad things happen in the dark. And I was thinking about this and I was thinking about a movie that I saw many years ago called Pitch Black. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you get a copy of this unless you really like horror movies. And to be honest, it was not my favorite movie of all time. But it was interesting because it takes place on this alien planet that appears to live in perpetual sunlight, perpetual light, due to the fact that it is circling three different suns. And so this spaceship crashes on this planet, and the survivors work to get off the planet of never-ending light. But then they realize that there is an eclipse coming, this eclipse which will cover the light of all three suns when they come into alignment, and the world is plunged into pitch black. And this is when all of the evil come forth. The creatures of the dark come out. But that theme isn't just only in this movie. It is in any number of other movies where the dark is a place of danger. The dark is to be feared. The dark is when evil arises. And we have come to equate darkness with bad things. Have you ever been worried that a monster might jump out from under your bed or from in your closet during the daytime? Probably not. 
Many of us have heard this reading from John this morning about the healing of the blind man. And in looking at this reading, we could look at what it means to be blind in the world. Or we could look at how we sometimes need to learn to see again. And I think that either of those would be very valid ways to examine this reading. But today we're talking about darkness and encounters at the edge of darkness. Our reading this morning starts out with much of the same type of conversation that we have just had at the beginning because it begins with the question, what evil caused this person to live in darkness? What evil caused this person to have to spend their entire life in darkness? And Jesus' response in many ways throws what we believe about darkness on its head. Because Jesus says that this person was blind so that God's works might be revealed in them. But what does any of this have to do with us and especially with us at this time in our lives and in the world today. It is said that people who cannot see, who live their lives in the dark, develop heightened senses. It is as if being in the dark has allowed them to hear better, to touch more deeply, and to have a sense of taste that is more refined. And yet in our world, we are conditioned to see the darkness as bad, so bad that we might forget the gift that might be found in those places. Because in the darkness, we come to have an opportunity to rest, to be rejuvenated. Sometimes in dark, we come to appreciate the light. We emerge from darkness to a whole new vision, to a whole new world way of seeing the world around us. I'd like you to imagine for a moment that you were blind, and you have been given the opportunity to see for the first time. What might that be like for each one of us? What might it be like to see everything around us as if we are seeing it for the first time? Even in our scriptures, there is a gift in the darkness. For we heard just a few weeks ago that Nicodemus comes to visit Jesus under the cover of darkness. Learning who Jesus was and what it meant for Nicodemus' life. And then there's one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 139, that tells us that even the deepest darkness is like daylight to God. We truly are living through different times right now. It is a time when the world has dramatically changed over the last few weeks. It is a time when many people might say that we are living through a time of darkness, and I would have a difficult time disputing that fact. But what does it truly mean to live in these dark times? Maybe this is a time when we are called to allow us to sense the world in a new and Way. Maybe this darkness is a way that we can really be blind to what is the way that the world has always been, the way that we have been living and giving us a chance to know the world and ourselves in a new way. Maybe this is a chance for each one of us to slow down, to recenter ourselves, and to encounter God in the midst of this time truly know that God is with us, to feel God with us at all times in our lives and in the world. And maybe, maybe this is giving us a chance to see the world in a new way, emerging from this with a new sense of the world, a new sense of God, a new sense of our place. I'd like to paraphrase a poem from Laura Kelly Fanucci at the end of this meditation. When this is over, when the darkness has lifted, 
May we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, hold shelves at a store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, a Friday night out, a taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, when this darkness is lifted, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hoped to be, and may we stay that way, better for each other because of the darkness. Know that during this time we do not go alone, we go with God, for even the darkness is like the brightest day to God. So we walk through this time together, encountering God along this way, knowing that God is with us today and tomorrow and the next day. It is our hope, it is what we trust in. In the midst of the dark, we know God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
invite you to center yourself, make yourself comfortable as we become God's people in prayer. So we respond to prayer, and so when I say God in your mercy, I invite you all to respond with hear our prayer. We call to mind our concerns and commitments and join our prayers for peace and well-being to the prayers of the whole church as they are offered this day to the whole world. Let us pray. We remember the people we know who are in trouble and pray for healing and happiness for all. And we lift up to you today those members of our community who we pray feel your presence in their lives today as we pray for Marlene McKay, Pat Hewitt, Susan Smallwood, Colleen Gates, Rob, Beverly Ryman, Tristan, Ken, Lindsay Carswell Feniak, Reese Carswell, Diana Johnson, Amanda Barber, Mary, Sheila Bradley, Haruko Miata, Shirley Robinson, Janice Scott, Kim, Brian Lazarko, Amber, as well as all people who are self-isolating, who have chosen to, or who are required to at this time. And we also lift up in prayer all of our emergency service workers and frontline workers. May they feel your presence and your strength in their life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We seek God's encouragement for honest trade and just commerce at this time for medicine for all and for new ways of education, for the gifts and aptitudes of every person which serve justice in our community living. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace on earth, for the generous sharing of earth's resources and the responsible sharing of earth's problems, for understanding of others and willingness to do to regard the diversity of human culture as more stimulating than threatening, and for the turning of swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church, all of its names and in all of its places, and for its continuing usefulness as a channel of grace and hope in this most trying time pray for the rescue from bureaucracy and stagnation, for its witness to unity and justice, and for its commitment to hospitality and compassion. God, in your mercy. We hear our prayer. And hear us now as we continue to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is We Are Pilgrims.
Christ's light for you in the nighttime of your fear. And that is what we're called to do and to be as Christians. We are called to be bearers of light, bearers of the Christ light in these dark times of the world. We are called to learn. We are called to recenter and refocus ourselves on God and to know that God is with us every step of the way. And so as you enter this new week, be the Christ light for those around you in phone calls and messages so that all people know that there is light in the darkness that God is found in the midst of these strange and difficult times. And know that as you go into this week, you go with the thoughts and prayers of this community of faith, and you go 